Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how to compile the SFML library from source code. So no installation managers, no packages, no downloads, just installing from the pure GitHub repository. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, and first things first, just in case you're on a system or maybe you've used libsfml before, we're going to want to make sure that we purge the SFML installation from our system here. So you can see that I don't have it installed here and I haven't installed it through my package manager because again, we want to do things from scratch. Okay, so how do we get started? Well, let's go ahead to the SFML page and we're going to go to download. And again, we're going to go to the GitHub repository. So this is even the most latest version here beyond even the snapshots that have been released here. And let's go ahead and grab the code by copying that uh, GitHub URL, cloning the repository. And then let's go ahead and start our journey here. So this is just going to take a few moments to download and then we'll get started. All right, so once the download completes, let's go ahead and jump into the SFML folder and let's see what we have here. Now, interestingly, most tools that you download that are meant to be rebuilt will come with some sort of help files, maybe a configure file or more often these days, a CMake list file. So if I go ahead and look at CMake list, this basically contains all the rules to generate some sort of project for us that we can compile. And you're going to see that we need CMake version 3.8 or later in order to build this. So if I check my CMake version, which I have installed, it'll be version 3.221. If you need help with CMake, just comment below or request a video and maybe I will make one to help you there. Okay, so the typical way that this works is I need to make a separate build directory where we're actually going to build our files. So I'm going to make it in the SFML directory here so you can see that I have build and we'll go ahead and navigate into it. So again, it's empty. And what I'm going to do now is run CMake and look in the top level directory and it'll automatically find that CMake list file to build our source code. Or again, let me be very specific. It's a meta build system that's going to build a build file and then we'll be able to build our code because CMake is going to help us with some other tasks, such as finding out if we're missing any dependencies or libraries on our system. So let's go ahead and run this. And hmm, okay, I get some red here and it says that the FLAC library is missing. And this is some sort of audio Kodak library here. So never fear if you're missing something, we just have to figure out how to install this missing dependency on our system. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is search through my app cache for Flack here and see if I can find any plugins that might be familiar here. Uh, in fact, this is a pretty big list. So sometimes I like to just grep for a library because that's what we're missing uh, and it highlights it in red. And if I sort of look through this alphabetically, I'll see that there is a Flack uh, development library here. And usually when you're building software from scratch, you're interested in the development library. So I'm just going to copy this here from libflack. And now let's go ahead and redo our build. But this time first installing our dependency. So sudo app git install the missing dependency. We're going to go ahead and uh, let that install. And now we'll try CMake again from our build directory. And this time it found all the dependencies, this time commenting the specific one that we just installed. Okay, great. So now I have a make file generated here. And again, if you want to check out CMake and the help options, you'll see the different types of project files that you can generate. Mine are just pure Unix make files for folks following this on Linux. In general, that's what's going to make sense to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and run make. I'm going to do a parallel build by doing dash J in eight. And then we'll just give it a moment to build our library. All right, so now that that's complete, you can actually see that it built some of our targets here, things like SFML graphics. If I scroll through this, you'll see there's a window library, audio library, etc., etc. So if I explore through this, well, where did those libraries actually get built? My guess is here in lib. So let's go ahead and just list out the contents of library. And you'll go ahead and see that we have these libraries here. Okay, so we're almost done, right? Let's go ahead and see if we can take one of the sample programs from SFML. So if I go back here into the learn section, tutorials, and let's just go ahead and hop into the Linux tutorial and grab some of the code because we know this code will work in their tutorial, or at least are pretty confident. And let's just go ahead and create an application here. 
So I'm just going to paste in this code. You can see that it's using the graphics library, so it is using SFML. And let's go ahead and try to compile this. So G++, our main application, dash O, SFML uh, app, and I'll hit enter. And of course, immediately we are missing the include libraries. Now, where do we find those? Well, let me go ahead and just sort of uh, navigate. Remember that we downloaded the SFML source repository. So what I have here in the GitHub repository is an includes folder. And conventionally, include is where all the header files will be. So we'll see that we have SFML here. So what I need to do is somehow tell my system uh, or my compiler rather where this include path is. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put in this full include path. Something you could do is update your path variable to have this or just refer to it by a relative location. In fact, maybe I'll do the relative location after I get it working. But let's just go ahead and point our source files here to the right location. So SFL app is what we're going to call it. And we need to include this path that I have uh, copy and pasted here. OK, so now we should have our header files or those header files are known to our compiler now. So if I hit enter, hmm, OK, still some more stuff that comes up here in the compilation. And well, what actually is going on here? Uh, if I try to take a closer look to it, it looks like, well, some of these are C++ 17 only features, and I believe my default might be 14 or maybe something else here. So let's go ahead and try to recompile, this time setting our standard to 17, because I happen to know the SML library is using some more advanced features, or we can dig through those error messages. I'll hit enter, and OK, not too bad. But this time, we've got a bunch of undefined references. And that, to me, usually means that we're having issues um, since our compilation here with finding libraries. OK, so again, we just have to teach our compiler where the libraries are. So the libraries, uh, uppercase L, will tell us which directory to look for libraries. And in this lib folder where we did our build here. So I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Still getting a bunch of undefined references because, well, now we need to include the actual window uh, library or the graphics library. And if you need a little refresher, you can look in the SFML tutorial here and the three libraries that are needed to get running the Hello World. So that's what I'm going to include here. We need to include SFML graphics, SFML window, and SFML system. OK. Let's go ahead and hit enter and voila, like that. It's going to work, right? So let me go ahead and run SML app. And hmm, well, no compilation errors when I ran through this and I ran our application, but now it's saying error while loading shared libraries. Okay, so our shared libraries, that's these three here. And basically what's happening here is, well, when our executable is running, it's loading these libraries at runtime. So we need to know what that path is. And there's a cool tool called LDD that if I run this on our executable, well, it'll tell us that it actually can't find these different libraries here. So we have to tell our system, our Linux system, that is where some paths are. So what I can do is CD into the lib directory here. And then I can run a tool called LD config. Now, let me go ahead and show you what LD uh, config does. And I'll just do this on the uh, manual page. And it says configure dynamic linker runtime binaries. And basically what this tool is going to do is in this directory say, hey, there's a bunch of new shared libraries here. We should know about them. So if one of our programs tries to execute and needs this dependency, meaning the graphic system or Windows library, that it will uh, load them up here. So let's go ahead and run LD config here. And it's just going to take um, a few minutes. Or actually, it's going to say, hey, permission design. Um, not granted, because we need to be a super user here. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and clear this. Go a directory, and let's go ahead and see what happens. Again, I still have my build here. And let's go ahead and give it a test. Oops. After I get rid of this 
Hmm, still giving an error here while loading our shared library. Cannot open shared object, no such file or directory. Okay, well the truth is here, we didn't use our LD config tool quite proper. We have to do a little bit more than just running in the actual directory, but actually pass in the path here. So here's my uh, path, which I'm going to copy here. And I'm just going to go ahead and run sudo ld config, and then my actual uh, full path here. And then if I go back to my application, I can now run it. So we've successfully compiled our application. We have on our system the libraries. And now you can start playing around with SFML. Now, a few caveats here. With our little uh, LD config tool, you might have to rerun this um, a few times or put it in a place where it is going to run so that you have your libraries uh, set up appropriately. You could otherwise copy your libraries into a known location. That's usually something like slash user slash local slash lib or one of these locations so that you have them available and that's already a known path. Otherwise, another little trick that you can uh, do is on your command line, when you actually execute your program, you can use some sort of load preload to determine where some library locations are. So I'll leave those as a few trails. If you need some help, uh, feel free to comment below. So folks, I hope that was a useful video for you and you now know how to build from source code SFML, the simple fast media library, and you know how to set it up on your Linux machine. So. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then please go ahead and like and subscribe. If you have any troubles, please comment below and someone from our community will hopefully help you out. Alrighty folks, thanks for your time and attention.